Hi there, this is Allison with Let's Go Travel Tips. Today it is so exciting, Princess has announced their COVID health protocols for sailings from Europe. You might remember that yesterday, uh, March 17th, they announced their protocols for sailings from the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom, as you know, I'm sure know, is right there next to Europe, but it's not really considered part of Europe. It is Great Britain, the United Kingdom. They're a little separate from that. And so there are different protocols on a few things for sailings that are going from European ports. So first of all, I would like to welcome all of our Let's Go family members. You are all wonderful, so thank you so very much for being here. Also, welcome to all of you who are new. We're really glad that you came. If there's anyone here who hasn't subscribed, we would love it if you would subscribe to our channel. It will help us out as well as I think that you are going to be um, really enjoy being a part of this community, the amazing Let's Go family. There is so much helpful information and kindness and just camaraderie that everyone here shares and so it is a remarkable group and you're not going to want to miss it. So first of all, um, like I said, Princess announced their COVID health protocols for sailings from Europe for this year and they specifically said that these are the sailings from Athens, Barcelona, and Rome on the Regal Princess from March 26 forward and from Copenhagen or Rome on the Enchanted Princess and the Island Princess. And so those are really the main sailings that are taking, that are departing from ports in Europe this year. And so um, this will cover everything. They said that they will update it as needed. So we'll just keep an eye out for any updates, but this is where we stand right now. I'm really excited to receive this because I've mentioned to you that Gordon and I are booked on um, a cruise departing from Rome on May 28th. And so I am really happy to know what's going on. So first of all, you do indeed need to be vaccinated and you need to do that at least 14 days before um, you sail and you are going to have to show a negative COVID test at embarkation and you are going to have to show proof of your vaccine. And so let me go through with you really quick what is required with that. Um, first of all, um, like I said, to be considered vaccinate, fully vaccinated, you need to have received both doses or else you're one Johnson & Johnson of your vaccine at least 14 days before you sail. Boosters are not required, but they are strongly recommended. And they said that in fact, some ports do require a booster and that um, vaccine requirements can change um, with no advance notice. And so they recommend that you stay up to date. And um, I do wanna point out, they did say that, you know, in the United States, the FDA has approved people to receive their booster dose five months after they receive their Moderna or their Pfizer and um, two months after you receive your Johnson & Johnson here in the United States. But they said that some European countries, and it really does vary, allow up to nine months sometimes. And so, um, like, I, like I shared yesterday, when you fly to Italy, you don't have to show a negative COVID test if you are fully vaccinated within nine months or if you it's if your um, vac last vaccination was more than nine months away then you need to have a booster shot to, to qualify for that otherwise you have to show a negative covid test when you arrive now in this it does not talk about having to fill out the eu locator forms but um, right now um, as of march 1st if you're flying into italy you have to fill that out so what that tells me is um, unless they change that requirement we're going to have to fill that out to fly into rome but we're not going to have to fill it out in order to get on a cruise ship. So I hope that makes sense to everyone. The other um, thing that I wanted to zip through really quick with you is just everyone, which vaccines are allowed on these cruises. So they allow the two doses of Pfizer, two doses of Moderna, one dose of Johnson & Johnson, two doses of the AstraZeneca, let's see here, two doses of the Cinefarm, two doses of the Cinevac, two doses of the Covaxin, and two doses of the Novavax. And those are the ones that we're using. And so I think that um, hopefully everyone will meet all those requirements no matter where you are from. But it's really important that if you haven't been vaccinated yet and you're gonna get vaccinated to cruise, remember to do it at least 14 days before you sail so that you will meet the requirements for that. So I just wanted 
wanted to make sure everybody remembers that. The next thing that I um, wanted to let you know is what you can show as your proof of vaccination as you board this ship. It says digital or paper records or QR codes showing the vaccine type, the date of each vaccine administered, the individual's name and date of birth or other identifier. And so if you're from the U.S., you can take your vaccine card. And um, I know that on mine, it has that information, all of that information already. I know that for some um, people, depending on where you got it, when we got our booster at um, Costco, they... Um, put it on my card and they also gave us a QR code. And so I just think it's easier to show my card, but um, that that's what's required. And yesterday, um, if anybody started listening to that video about the COVID health re um, requirements um, for sailing out of the UK and you got bogged down, I just listed every um, bit of information that they had about all the locations in the UK and what um, form of like what proof of vaccine they would show because we do have lots of let's go family members in the UK so if you kind of stop there you might want to go ahead and pick it up again and finish the video because there's a lot of helpful information there the other thing that I wanted to let you know once again is and I think this is so important about boosters being um Re not required but strongly recommended it says um here's the they've put this in here two times so boosters may be required by certain health authorities on the itinerary or required on specific voyages new vaccination entry requirements can change without notice so we recommend you keep your vaccine status up to date and ensure that you are familiar with the requirements for the destinations that you plan to visit and so I'm going to work on putting together the information on the destinations that we are going to visit on our cruise. It's a 14-day um, cruise, and um, I picked it because it honestly has the most remarkable collection of um, Italy and Greece, um, islands and Athens and Sicily, and then it also has Ephesus and, and Istanbul. So if you're looking for a cruise, that's the one. If you're thinking you might be going to the Mediterranean, that's the one that you need to take and I've been there enough times to know. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and look at each port and see what's required just so that I can tell all of you. But it's really important that you stay up to date on it as well because um, since we're all responsible for ourselves. Now here's the um, really big thing next. So testing. It says that everyone um, ages five and above will be required to re to um, well, sorry, let me start that again. To board the ship, all guests who are age five and older will be required to show a medically observed negative COVID test within one day of embarkation. One day. Okay, it doesn't matter if you're vaccinated, if you're boosted, it does not matter. You have one day. But here's the awesome thing. They go on to say, we understand that this may not be possible based on your travel plans. So for your convenience, um, we will also offer antigen testing at the terminal. For those that wish to take advantage of this option, a nominal fee will apply as a stateroom folio charge. So I can tell you right now, that's what Gordon and I are going to do. We're just, uh, and let me tell you this. So we are going to fly in. Um, we're going to leave here on Tuesday and the ship leaves on Saturday. So we're going to go to Rome and do a bunch of sightseeing. And then when we're done, we're going to go back to the Fiumicino, if I hope I said that right, airport there in Rome. And we're going to take the Princess Shuttle. We've um, got it booked already out to the cruise port. And um, we're going to do our test out there because that just kind of takes care of everything. And you know, clear back when I was just entertaining the idea of doing this channel, one day I just recorded a video about Rome and I started there because it's my favorite place. <laughs> but um, it is, I'm, um, I'm not quite as good at doing it and I am still really trying hard to get better at this. So I don't think I'm awesome now. I'm trying though. Um, but um, so it's a little different, but um, it has a lot of really good information and I stand by everything I said in it. So I will ask Gordon to go ahead and link it under this video because if you're going there, it just contains some information that it's really handy to know before you go, especially if you've not been before. And um, just a, a little bit of information about what to expect and why we take that princess shuttle. I'll talk about that a little bit more, but it's really a good idea to do it there in Rome. Now, the next thing um, that I wanted to make sure everybody knows is, let me find it right here. Um, I do wanna let you know about masking. And um, with masking, 
it's luckily, well, I shouldn't say luckily. I just like that people have a choice. And so it's going to be like it has been just recently here in the United States. It says masks on board will be recommended but not required in the vast majority of venues. There may be select venues or certain situations in which masks are required. And this will be clearly designated with signage and onboard communications. And so um, it'll just be like we've been seeing. Um, I know right now that the numbers with COVID are higher in Europe than they are here but it's going to be really interesting to see how things change. And I know that some of you are like on your way to Europe to meet, um, to go on cruises as those transatlantics arrive that had already left Fort Lauderdale. And so I am anxious to hear from any of you, if you would let us know how your travels go and how your testing goes and just everything about getting on this ship and the experiences you're having, that would be really valuable to everyone. And when we go at the end of May, um, that's really the earliest that we can go <laughs> with our family things that we've got right now. Um, that's the earliest we can go. Um, I, it's not quite as early as I would have liked to, but we will go out of our way to show everything to you so that you know what to expect if you're sailing after we are. But it just really um, takes all of us here. And so um, I just, I really like that about the masking. Um, there was a question on here. A lot of people ask me if they're doing like the champagne waterfall and other things like that. And so I found that on here. It says large um, group events, including singing groups, the voice of the ocean, behind the scenes tours. Somebody asked me about ship tours the other day and we hadn't seen that on any of our cruises. And so they mention it here and the captain's champagne waterfall will not be available during these cruises. And so I think that they are still really limiting those last few things that require a lot of people to gather together in one place. When we were on um, the Caribbean Princess in January, they did have like dance parties out like on the open decks. And I expect to see that on this and get togethers like that. But that's not like Champagne Waterfall. If you haven't been on a cruise ship, they do that in the piazza and it is just beautiful. They build the big waterfall out of champagne glasses and um, then usually is that the Mater D comes and starts pouring and it glows down all pretty and people get their picture taken up there with the captain and everybody likes to come and watch. It's on a formal night. Everyone looks beautiful. It's really very festive and wonderful, but so many people come to that because it's just fun to see. And so that is really different than what um, I would think that we would see in a lot of other gatherings on the ship. And so they're not um, clearly doing that yet, but look forward to it. If you um, haven't been to one of those yet, you should go catch it because it's just fun to see even um, like my husband and I don't um, drink um, alcohol so it's not like we're excited that we're going to drink some champagne but it's just lovely it's very festive and absolutely beautiful now the other thing that um, people ask so often is about how are we going to get our COVID test to go home and here's what princess says and it's like we expected it says if a negative COVID test is required for re-entry into your home country, subject to availability, Princess will cover the costs of any COVID-19 test administered on board within the time frame required prior to travel. And so um, it sounds like you can plan on that, but you know what? I do notice that they say subject to availability and I know that this is going to be hard. They've got to make sure that they can secure all of the tests they need for everyone. And so my suggestion is to have a backup plan so that you know um, where you're going to get it if Princess happens to run out. And I have checked airports. I looked at the Barcelona airport because that's where we're going to fly out of. And they do have them at the Barcelona airport they have them at the Rome airport they have them in a lot of places and so I just wanted to make sure that everybody knows about that and um, you know what somebody asked me about where I had found that you can get a COVID test in Rome and you know what when we went to um, the Mediterranean in 2019 we took a tour of the Colosseum with a company called the tour guide and it was outstanding. He really, really did an amazing job. And then during the um, shutdown, they would let you pay to go on a virtual tour. And really what it was is um, 
they were trying to keep their tour guides employed so that they could still earn a little bit of money and so you could just pay to be on like a zoom meeting with them and other people were there too but they would talk about all of these places and um, you would get to hear about it and if you had a question you could put it in the comments and they would pick it up and answer it and they really really outstanding and so that company the tour guy has started um, in lots of large cities in Europe finding places for people to be um, tested for COVID because they know that you need it to get back you know often into your home country and so that is who I found and on the um, thing for Rome it doesn't say where the testing location is so I did the chat thing with the team member because I wanted to know we're still trying to decide where we're going to stay in Rome but um they chatted back to me and the place that they do is right there close to Termini. And so that is so handy because um, lots goes on around Termini. I actually really like to stay close to Termini because it's where all the lines for the metro originate from. Plus it's close enough to a lot of things that you can walk to them. Um, like in the Termini area, you can just walk and go down um, you can walk to the Colosseum. We've done that. Sometimes we've taken the uh, metro to get there, but you can walk to lots of places. And so um, it's a great place. So if you are somebody that's wanting to book your own test, you go on there and do it. They charge you for the cost of the test. And then they also charge 10 euros for um, the service that they offer. But I do think it's worth it because they said they do that because they confirm your appointment time and make sure it is really booked with the place. And um, if you watch my um, video about Rome, uh, you will know that people there are not, they're not irresponsible. It's just that sometimes there's a language barrier and sometimes um, things are way more laid back than I am. But I love going there and I, I try to adapt a little bit more of that laid back into my life. But I, it's worth it to me if I was going to be worrying getting a COVID test there to go ahead and do that. So look it up, the tour guide, just Google it. It comes up really easy and they do lots of other tours too and based on our experience I would recommend them so I just wanted to let you know um, that we have these I am so excited so excited because now everyone can plan for what they're going to do when they sell from these parts this summer if you've got any questions about any of this just put it in the comments below and we'll do our best um, to get back to you and I really appreciate all of you who are so kind to pop in and reply to a comment um, if I don't catch it and I'm a little bit behind I apologize we've got family here and I'm trying to keep up with work and this and so um, not to make excuses just so that you know I don't mean to be late so I will um, if, you, if you all appreciate these updates would you please give this video a thumbs up because that will help us out I'll be talking to you all again really soon you all take really good care God bless you. Love you. Bye-bye. <laughs>